I was 15. I was 15 when I got it. And I'm, I'll be 18 in February. We started out with a child with, I won't say a simple, but a small infection on her leg that uh, when she got to the doctor, they immediately recognized it was more than that and sent us to the emergency room. And it was MRSA staff that was in there. And being a parent, I thought, okay, MRSA staff, we've got an infection, give some antibiotics, you know, it'll go away. Very simplistic thought on that. Uh, then found out that it was resistant to the antibiotics and possible outcomes are having a leg amputated or even it could cause death, you know. So that's the first wake up call we had. This was the day that I felt the bump on my leg. I mean, like it got big and started to hurt. And see how like I look really bad, but you can see how small I was. Like that was when I right, right when I first came out of the hospital. That's why I look so bad, so I don't judge. She had a chunk of tissue taken out of her leg and then went on antibiotics to clear up the rest of the MRSA. And about 30 days after she came off of the antibiotic, uh, she started having some stomach problems. It's like a sharp knife in your stomach and you just feel it and feel it and feel it and you feel like you have to go to the bathroom. And then when you go to the bathroom, it's just blood and mucus. And we, again, thought very, you know, naively about it, that this was going to be a little short course of antibiotics, get rid of the C. diff, and we go away. Um, two and a half years later, we're still battling C. diff and used every treatment that is available to the doctors, their disposal of antibiotics and other trial medicines. And now we're looking at one that, um, it has a higher percentage of uh, success rate and is actually a natural, the easiest process to do, and that's a uh, fecal transplant, and that's where we're at now. We're one day away from having that process done. Uh, so C. diff is also known as Clostridium difficile. In some patients, they will carry it in their colon, but it doesn't actually cause any disease. Um, the other range of that spectrum is they can have a very um, fulminant colitis that can result in toxic megacolon, which is a surgical emergency. And in some patients, infection with Clostridium difficile can even result in death. looking back at these pictures. It really upsets me because I was so skinny and I'm so fat. Like I looked like that. That's good. I was so pretty. You were happy. It's like the cure that saved her leg ruined her life. The cure was devastating. Antibiotics changed how we treat everything. But I think in recent years, we're starting to understand that there are downward consequences. And I think C. diff is the easiest, clearest example of that. Um, in somebody who has not gotten antibiotics, their risk of C. diff is substantially lower than somebody who's gotten pretty substantial antibiotic exposures. So that's clear. I've lived on antibiotics pretty much. I, I'm in four pills a day for like two months at a time. Every time you get that glimmer of hope, you say, okay, we're gonna take the vancomycin for 30 days, 60 days. We're gonna take the fidaxomycin. We're gonna take the Diphacid. You know, this has worked. Uh, studies all across the country show this worked. Well, nothing worked. Um, and, and we were very optimistic at every time that course of treatment came on board. And I think I see the studies, I've heard from the doctors telling me the success rate in this. Um, and part of me just wants to go, yay, we're finally getting this done. As a matter of fact, I think I said that when we found out we had the appointment at Vanderbilt to get this done, but you have to go into it with a bit of caution.
it's extremely aggravating that she's had to go this long waiting on a process that should make her well within a matter of hours. This will be there. This is going to do the trick. I'm telling you, you got the healthiest donation you could possibly get. I got my hopes up if I speak to someone, I tell them it's a, a transplant of bacteria from a healthy individual into her stomach. You know, you don't tell them it's fecal matter that's going in there. But now, uh, you know, we're poop experts. We know this. <laughs> RJ is the closest family member and he hasn't been on antibiotics and it has to be a close re relative. I didn't understand really what was going to happen at first. I thought they were going to do some cool, crazy science experiment thing on my body and take it out of me and put it in my sister. So I was all for it, just being weird. But then we had an in-depth moment of saying, no, this is what you have to do. You have to donate the specimen and they're going to put it inside of her. And I was just kind of like, okay. It was definitely weird. It wasn't weird talking about it. The weird part was when they handed me a cup and said, here you go. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm gonna call one of the fellows to come help me in. This is just more so for us, for the smell. <laughs> Does the stool go in in, in stool form, or do you? Okay. So to get it through our um, channel, it has to be kind of in a liquid form. Okay. That's why I went to school all this years. That's why we did. Yeah. 30 years of And then you just shake it. What we're doing with a fecal transplant is we're really just repopulating the healthy flora. And when you understand kind of the background of why this is happening and the pathophysiology of it, it really just makes sense. How many times a day have you been going? To the bathroom? Yeah. I don't keep count. <laughs> a Before lot. Before you did the clean out. Even um, then? A lot, yes, a lot. Okay. So, did she not get better with the vancomycin? I would take the vancomycin when my C. diff would reoccur, and I'd be fine for a little while. And then, about two weeks after I stopped taking the vancomycin, it all the C. diff would come back, and it'd just be the process over again. Vancomycin is a lawnmower that goes through the intestines and it just knocks it down, looks nice and pretty, no symptoms and all for a while, but you didn't remove that grass from the soil. It's not clean soil sitting there. Um, so when the vancomycin stops, it just starts growing again, goes on its 30 day cycle, boom. And once it starts growing, it just starts wreaking havoc on your intestines. When you think about it, we're treating her with antibiotics when antibiotics can be the problem in the first place. So the success once you've started this cycle of antibiotics is about 50%. The success of a fecal transplant is about 80%. Sometimes we do have to repeat it and that takes it to about a 90%. So even there's still some patients that don't do perfect even with mm -hmm. this, but it's much better than when you compare it to antibiotics. Yeah. Okay. People like having well-defined protocols. But it's so early in studying this that right now when I consent a patient for this procedure, I make sure they understand this is investigational. There could be downward consequences that we're just not aware of yet. smart enough to know that yeah you have to have checks and balances on everything to make sure this isn't bad bacteria going into an otherwise healthy individual but you have methods to screen the feces and no recovery no surgery no cutting uh, it, it just seems too simplistic almost for me and I don't understand why it's so hard to get it done I think there's some concern about just safety profile and that of the unknown also, I think a lot of physicians are concerned that, that patients would be not really interested. And um, to be honest with you, clinically, that's not what I've seen at all. A lot of patients are very interested in this. They, they, they think it makes sense, uh, and they're sick of antibiotics, and they're sick of the disease.
We've seen how much the macomycin costs. It's anywhere from $4,000 to $9,000. If we didn't have insurance, my child could have died by now because it's waited so long because of getting the okay for the procedure. He has her stuff on me. We could have had a cure. I mean, there is a cure, and we could have done this two years ago, and so much could have been better for her. We used to think of the human host as just the human host, and now we understand that we have 10 times um, the number of non-human cells as human cells. So we're all in this intricate balance, and when that balance gets disrupted through antibiotic use, there's consequences, and we're still only starting to understand what that means in life. I wish I would have known about the fecal transplant before I went through all the antibiotics. It's just not worth two and a half years. If there's something else out there that can cure it like that. People die every year from C. difficile infection and I am very blessed to be one of the survivors.